Here we go with a review on this unit on functions and limits. The things we're going to cover in this review are our first lesson, which was on function introduction, and then we'll talk about the domain and range, just looking at the graphs. We'll go over again the limits, just using graphs of how to find limits off of the graphs, and then dealing with limits and infinity. Now this is not going to be an intense review, it's just going to be an overview real quick, nor is this going over the actual review. Okay, so if that's what you're expecting here, that is not this. I'm just giving a quick little review of all the little lessons as a refresher for you. So the first lesson, one of the things we talked about was stuff like this, where we had x squared minus x plus 1. Here's our function, and we're going to plug in the 2x minus 1. So just remember that that means 2x minus 1 is plugged in anywhere where you see the x. So x minus, whoops, 2x minus 1 and then plus one. So uh, this and this is substituted in where the x was here and here. And then you'd have to multiply this whole thing out. I'm not going to keep going on this one. It's just a reminder, this is 2x minus one quantity squared, which means there are two of them. And then on this one, you have to distribute that negative to both spots, okay, and then simplify. Another thing we did in this lesson was understanding that this value of x's and y's, so if this is x and y, that's the same thing as just putting it as a coordinate point, as an ord ordered pair. And when you're using function notation, that means that the x is plugged in as a 3, and what comes out is a y value of negative 5. It all means the same thing. What about looking at this here? We would, if we were trying to find out these values, this means the x value is a 2. So let's see, that would be a negative 3. In this case, the x value is a negative 2. And that case, what are, are we up here? Way up here at 5, it looks like. Yep, we're up there at 5. So be careful about that when you're on a test, that you very carefully look at where the grid line is. See, the grid line's not crossing there, so keep going until you see it crossing. And then this means that what is the x value if the y value is negative 4? So if the y value is negative 4, the x value is a 1. And if f of x is 0, so the y value is a 0 here and here, then the x values are negative 1 and 3. One more thing about this lesson. In this lesson, we did talk about whether or not a, a function is, or excuse me, uh, a graph or a set of table values is a function or not. And that, you find that out by using one. You could use the vertical line test. So just remember that vertical line test. Or you check all the x values and that the x values only match up with one specific y value. So example of that would be if we had another x value of 3 in this chart, it would absolutely have to be a negative 5 in order for it to be a function. Now I could have another x value of 2, and it could also be negative 5. That's OK. It is still a function. But every single x value must map to one and only one y value. All right, domain and range. The next lesson we talked about, before we got into the domain and range, we, we did the 12 basic functions. So this is just a reminder. This is not all 12. Just a reminder that you do want to remember these. This one's linear. Uh, this one is a quadratic. These are the basic ones. So you're going to want to look over those again. This one's cubic. And then the formulas, of course, you'll have to know the formulas of the parent functions. That one's an x squared, and that one's an x cubed. OK, so all 12 of them, you need to know those. Increasing, decreasing functions. This is where we're just talking about the domain, or excuse me, not the domain, the uh, the interval. So the graph is increasing from negative infinity to this value of negative 3. So we go negative infinity to negative 3. And then it's also increasing from 1. So we'll do a little u here. From 1 to, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 to 4. And then it's decreasing from negative 3 to 1. That's the only place it's decreasing, so negative 3 to 1, and we're just going to use parentheses on there because we don't actually include this, the peaks and valleys uh, because right at that spot it's not increasing or decreasing. And then it's constant from the value of 1, 2, 3, 4 to infinity. Okay, does that seem familiar? Hopefully. It's going from there to there, and we just use parentheses on these, not brackets. For the actual domain and range, I gave a pretty tough one here to uh, to give you a little bit of test. This one might be one that you actually try to do on your own if you want. I'm going to go ahead and do it now, but if you want to try on your own, just see if you get it right, go ahead. This is used to be on an old mastery check of mine, but I took it off because almost everyone would miss it. So this is a good challenge for you to see if you can do this one right. All right, so domain value. I'm going to take a line here and help, my, help myself eyeball what is happening. 
So as I start moving across from the left side, the very first value I get to is right here at negative 2. So for the, my domain, I'm going to start at negative 2, but it is an open circle, negative 2. Since it's an open, so I do a parenthesis. And then I continue until I get to, let's see, where am I going? It gets here. Now there is a break there, but there's not a break in the x values. This x value and that x value are still the same thing, so there's never a break. And then I get all the way to here, and again, it's the same thing. I have open circle, closed circle. So there's no gap in x values, and then I get all the way to here, and this is where it stops. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and the number 5. So when we get to 5, that is where it stops, and it's a closed in circle, so I do a bracket. And then the inequality, I do negative 2 is less than x which is less than or equal to 5. It's just a less than, not a less than or equal to, it's just a less than. Okay, now let's try the range, which is usually where people make mistakes on this one. Let's see. Okay, so let's start on the bottom. It's going to start off here at negative 3, that's the lowest point, so, and it is open, so I'll say parenthesis negative 3, comma. Now, where is it continuing up? Right here, there is a break in the graph at negative 2. And, but there is also a graph here, but they're both open. So negative 2 should not exist anywhere in the range. So I'm going to go from negative 3 to negative 2, union. And now, where do I go from here? I'll continue up, 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 up. See, all these y values are included until we get to 2. So we go from negative 2 to 2. Negative 2, that's a negative 2 there, to 2. Okay, so that's our interval notation. It's basically everything from negative 3 to 2 except for negative 2. And then the inequality would be, oh, whoa, whoa, I messed up on something. That should be a bracket, right? The last one, 2. Yep, that's a bracket. I go from negative 3, which is less than y this time because I'm doing range, which is less than negative 2. And then I also have from negative 2, which is less than y, less than or equal to positive 2. There's your domain and range off the graphs. In the third lesson, one of the things we did was we talked about limits, but we also talked about whether or not it is continuous or not. And so just as a quick reminder before we do the limits, uh, you're going, if, it's, if it is removable discontinuity, that is when you just have a hole. Okay, so this one's a removable, because if you fill in the hole like this, then it is continuous. Okay, that's removable. If you say that it is non-removable discontinuity, then there's two types. The two types of non-removable are, so number one would be that it is a jump, and then number two would be, I'm running out of room here, hopefully you can see this, Number two, just kind of reminding you here, it would be an infinite discontinuity. Infinite meaning there's a vertical asymptote. Infinite. Okay, you get the idea here. So we have two types, removable and non-removable. And if, there, if there's ever a break, if you have to lift up your pencil to keep drawing it, then it's a discontinuity. Okay, so now on this problem, we don't have to classify whether it's removable or non-removable, but on the review and the test, you will have to do that. So let's try this out here. Uh, the limit. So we remember the limits. This is both left and right side because there's no little symbol right there on the top. So we're going to go approach negative 3 from both sides. Oops, get rid of that. Don't show that again. We're going to go towards negative 3 from both sides and the y value is a 0. And how about this one? f of 1. This just means what's the y value. When f of 1, what's the y value? There is no y value, so it does not exist. The limit as x approaches 1. So now here, we're having we're just approaching a 1 value from both sides, and it approaches a y value of negative 5. This one is negative 2 from the right side, so we're going to approach negative 2 from only the right side of it, so we're going back towards it like this. So stay on the graph here, and we're going to go towards negative 2. That has a value of 4. This one, f of 3, so f of 3 right there has a y value of negative 1. Here we're approaching negative 2 from the left, so we're, here's negative 2. We're going to approach it from the left, and that's approaching a y value of 1. 
this one, we're approaching negative 2 from both sides, the limit approaching negative 2 from both sides. Well, since the left side and the right side are different, it does not exist. Alright, negative 2. What is the y value of negative 2? It's the filled in circle. So the y value of negative 2 is 3. Now approach negative 1 from both sides. So here's our negative 1. We're approaching it from both sides, left side and right side. Approach, approach the value of 3. And then the last one, we're going to approach the number 1. x value is a 1 from the left. That's what that little exponent up there means, the negative. So approaching 1 from the left, and it is approaching negative 5. There you go. Quick review on limits. Hopefully that was really clear for you. If you're struggling with that, that might be when you need to go back and watch the lesson on the limits. Okay, limits to infinity. I want to remind you of some things real quick. If I'm doing a horizontal asymptotes, so if I'm looking for the horizontal line here that goes right there, that horizontal, and then you have the vertical that goes there. So if I'm looking for those two things, the way you do the notation is for horizontal, we're going to say the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x. And then that's talking about the right side. And then you have to talk about the left side by saying x is approaching negative infinity of f of x. And then that equals. Okay, so on this case, it would be the same value. Whatever, in this case, it's a 2. So for that example, it would be that it equals 2. This is the horizontal asymptote. And you have to both say the right side and the left side, both of these statements, to get full credit. Because you can't just talk about one side. you got to talk about both. And then when we're talking about the vertical asymptote, so let's do vertical asymptotes. Whoops. Vertical asymptotes. That would be the limit as x approaches, and now in this case, our rule in our notes, we'd say the value c, but really it is, oops, get that back here, in this case it's a value of 1. So we're going to approach 1 from the left side. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side, so from the left side it's approaching positive infinity. So you can see the difference here is, one, that we're approaching infinity with the x values, and on vertical asymptote, asymptotes, the y value is approaching infinity. But just like the horizontal, you do have to talk about both sides. So we're going to approach the number 1 from the left and from the right of f of x, and then if we're approaching it from the right side, it goes down to negative infinity. Okay, so this is how the notation works. So with that, let's do this last problem and we'll do both the horizontal asymptotes and the vertical asymptotes. Let's do horizontal asymptote first. And we're going to just do the exact same statement. So let me pause and write those out. Okay, here are the statements I've written out, and I can, without even knowing the answer to these yet, I can write my whole answers out except for just what they equal. And I can do that because this is always how the horizontal asymptotes are written. I did the left side first on this one, and then the right side. And then my vertical asymptote, these charts I will always give you the uh, what the vertical asymptote is to help with that so I know that there's going to be a vertical asymptote on this thing at negative 2 and I just want to know the the uh, the behavior around that vertical asymptote so I'm going to approach negative 2 from the left and approach negative 2 from the right side so that is the answer to all of these now let's grab a calculator and plug that in so if you don't have this plugged into a calculator yet grab it go to y1 y equals and plug it in okay here's mine plugged into a calculator now the next thing is, how do we get the horizontal asymptote? Well, you may remember some rules from Algebra 2 how to do this, and you're going to have a lesson later on this year that goes more details how you can see it real fast. But if we're talking about the calculator, the idea is if we look at the graph, we're talking about going way off to the left and way off to the right. So initially when we look at this, it just looks like the horizontal asymptote is zero, but that's actually incorrect on this. The horizontal asymptote is not zero. So the way you get that is you need to either put your window way off to the right and to the left and figure out where that is, or I kind of want to do a table. Let's, we're in the ask, table ask. Let's just see how well this works. So uh, let's see, clear that, clear that. Oh, that's not working. Delete, delete. There we go. Delete, delete. So let's do just a big number. Let's type in a one with a bunch of zeros. Look at that, 0. 0.33333. Okay, so I could just type in an even larger number, 0.3 repeating. So that's one third. What if I went the other way, negative, and then just a big number? Doesn't really matter what. Just go way off to the left, 0.3 repeating. So the table ask feature could be a quick way of knowing that both the left side and the right side, the y value is approaching 
one third. Okay, so it wasn't approaching zero. Let's look at that graph again. It wasn't approaching zero. It was actually approaching one third, which is really close to zero, and you can't tell just by looking at the picture of this. So be careful about that. You actually want to plug in very large numbers, and you could just plug in the number by hand if you wanted. That that's kind of a pain. So the calculator can speed that up a bit. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is get the vertical asymptotes by plugging in some numbers to this table, and we want to plug in numbers that are pretty darn close to negative two. So on this right side, let's do negative 1.999, something like that. And on this side, negative 2.001. So if we go th like three decimals or so, this side I could do negative 1.9 and maybe uh, negative 1.5 or something like that. What, what you'll be graded on is if you're showing that you're getting closer and that if you're actually getting really close. Okay, it's got to be pretty close to that negative 2 to be able to tell. This one will go negative 2 point, we can go negative 2.1, and this one maybe negative 2.5. Okay, something like that. Grab that calculator, plug those into the table ask, and I'll plug those in now and see what we get. Okay, there's my answers. Let me just drag that over here so we can take reference of that. And... So what we have, and you would need to fill that chart out on your test, actually, to get credit for that. But then this tells us that as we approach negative 2 on the left side, it's a very large positive number. It's 3,000. So since it's a large positive number on the left side, it's approaching, it, it, the y values here are going up in value, 6, 30, 3,000. On the right side, as we go backwards towards negative 2, what's happening? We're at negative 5.6, negative 29, negative 3,000. So it's getting more and more negative, which means it's approaching negative infinity on the right side as we come back towards negative 2. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And uh, hey, that's it. That was our entire unit in a nutshell. Good luck on that test, and uh, I'll be back with you actually in the next unit.